Imagine it's 10,000 years ago, and you see a solar eclipse. You're out hunting or planting seeds or whatever, and the sun, the giver of all light and heat, turns black. You'd probably want to figure that out. It's unlike anything that we ever experience in nature. This is Tyler Nordgren. He's an astronomer at the University of Redlands in California. And he's an expert on the deep connection that people have had with eclipses. For human history, these strange, regular occurrences were something that stimulated curiosity. Different cultures saw different things. In Hindu and Tibetan mythology, the severed head of Rahu swallowed the sun. For the Norse, it was Loki's dogs. And for some Native Americans, it was a great bear walking the Milky Way, biting the sun when it refused to move. But those stories couldn't really tell us when the next eclipse would happen. For that, we'd need some new ideas. We're now into an interpretation of the world in which it's natural occurrences, natural forces. Civilizations began to notice patterns. Solar and lunar eclipses happen about two weeks apart and could only happen during certain times of year. By around 2,000 years ago, Chinese and Greek astronomers were able to predict at least some eclipses. And here's something crazy. The Greeks even invented this thing. It was basically the world's first computer, a thousand years ahead of its time. What did it do? Among other things, it computed eclipses. In the following centuries, math and science bloomed. We learned how to calculate the moon's orbit, which finally told us when and where an eclipse would happen. We could plan for them and go see them and even use them to help make the universe make sense. Once you realize that eclipses are a physical phenomenon, then you can begin to finally answer some questions about the world in which we live. After an eclipse over Athens in 478 BC, a Greek philosopher asked sailors where they were when they saw it. He was able to figure out a rough estimate for the moon's actual size. It was the first time that anyone on Earth knew how big something was in space. In 1868, thanks to a solar eclipse, we had discovered a new chemical element on the sun, decades before we found it on Earth. Then, an eclipse in 1919 changed kind of everything. A German physicist had this new idea. Massive objects bend space and time. And we perceive that bending as gravity. It seemed crazy, but... There was actually a way to test it. If you could measure the positions of the stars without the sun, and then again when the sun was in front of them, you could see whether or not the sun bent space the way Einstein predicted. In 1919, an eclipse gave astronomers the perfect chance to see if Einstein was right. And the stars were exactly where Einstein said they should be. It made him a legend and confirmed one of our best theories of why the universe is the way it is. Nowadays, we know where the moon's shadow will be on April 26th in the year 3000. It may seem like modern science has taken away whatever magic eclipses may have had for our ancestors. But Nordgren says the opposite is true. The first time I saw this myself, the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I, I understood the difference between knowing and feeling. Eclipses link us to our past and to the universe. They're proof that with a bit of ingenuity, we can take something that used to terrify us and turn it into something amazing. Hey, I'm Mac. I made this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of thing, we've got tons more at opb.org slash video. And to make sure you don't miss anything, like us on Facebook.